Can you lower us a little bit, please, Melinda? Okay. So we're going to be in the uh, book of James again today. Again, um, we have no real, you know, um, series name for this. But I just, again, I, a few weeks ago, I was just going through the book. And, and, and I guess as a pastor and a leader, and also some of that other ministries that I have, following ministries, you know, helping pastors and trying to be their support, God, and mentor, some of them. You know, James is interesting because, again, he's speaking to the leaders of the church. Do these scriptures apply to those? First, of course, they do. They're, they're in the Bible, but I guess that's why I'm so, like, I just love reading some of the things he shares because, because he's speaking to the leaders and he's letting us know that even as leaders, we have many leaders here, right, in our ministry, you know, we got issues too. Amen. And we fall short too sometimes. You know, he's talking to pastors of churches. You know, and, and that's why I just, I don't know, I guess we just can clean so much from it. So, last month, uh, you know, we, we, I almost said celebrate, we didn't celebrate, we remember the anniversary of 9-11, you know, the terrorist attacks, right, 22 years now. And, and do you remember afterwards, and, and I won't even let you raise your hands, if you didn't, I would get a bucket of oil and pour it over you. <laughs> But do you remember afterwards how we viewed people that look Middle Eastern? Oh, oh, Some of you were too young or even born yet, 20 years ago. So you don't even remember this. But, you know, beforehand we didn't notice certain look of people. But afterwards we immediately noticed it and identified it. And remember during COVID, which is only a couple years ago, I hate COVID. And at the Bible, the seven things that God hates and COVID. No, and you remember how once we found out that maybe it came from China, right? We didn't have all the proof, but now we do. How people looked at Asian people? Yeah. They were getting beat up, judged. People were burning their houses down. So, you know, things that we see and things that we're taught sometimes give us a view of what to look for. You know? I mean, in the current days we live in, how much do we hear about this? I hear it one more time. I'm going to strangle somebody. Racism. Like, who doesn't have prejudice or racism? Anybody? No, we all do. I don't care what color you are, where you come from, okay? We, we all have some of it in us because we're born and raised certain ways to see certain things and you live in a certain neighborhood and, you, and you're taught certain things. I just always laugh because you know, I'm just going to be real right now. My parents, you know, my parents are very old school Italian people. My grandparents came from Italy. And, you know, they're like superly, openly prejudiced people. Okay? You know what I'm saying? And it was just like, we're not prejudiced. Yes, you are. <laughs> yeah. So, so, listen, if you can say, I'm not prejudiced, I'm like, no, no, we are. We are. We are. We just don't walk around thinking that I'm prejudiced. Hopefully, you know, and you come on this side today and get the oil too. <laughs> Color, economic status, backgrounds, what someone looks like, you know, maybe other things. Thank God Jesus is not prejudiced. Amen. That's right. Or racist. That's right. Because he doesn't see nothing but a lost soul. Mm -hmm. And James shows us something. Okay, the verses we're going to read in. And I shared this title. It's kind of odd, but you'll know where I'm going with it. Prejudice heart, prejudice towards souls. And we may not think like, oh, let, let, that's exactly what it is. Because if we're Christians, we're believers, and we're called by God to share Jesus with others. Same way someone's sharing with us. I don't care if it was a parent, grandparent, friend, neighbor, whoever it might be. Okay, if we have a prejudice heart, then we're never going to reach a soul. So don't look at the face. Don't look at the economic status, the background, That's the right. smell. That's right. I shared this story many times. I'll say it again. I'll never ever forget in our, in our sister church, Calvary, years ago, it was an altar call, an evangelist, and this guy who was homeless, and he stunk like smoke, booze, urine. He was dirty and filthy, and people were coming to the altar, and this guy came to the altar, and people moved away from him. God must have 
like, oh, oh my heart. And me and my brother and a couple other guys went up around him. Did he shake? Yeah. 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 Sometimes we shake too, but not by smell, by who we are. Oh, that's good. That's right. But Jesus don't look at that. That's right. So when we have prejudice hearts towards certain, it can be a family member. Mm -hmm. And we're being prejudiced towards their soul. They don't know Christ. Okay? If we keep that prejudice heart, it'll get hard and hardened. And James shows us something in, in, in chapter 2, verses uh, 1 through 12. And, and he wants to open our hearts and, and let us look at these things in case they're in there. And again, he's speaking to pastors of churches. It's not like he's talking to some brand new Born again Christian. He's not one of the people that are teaching the people. And again, it applies to all of us. Let's stand and read and pray. Sorry. We pray for the Lord. Lord, we thank you for the word this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit is moving here today. I can feel it so much. And it's only because the people came in looking for it. Yeah. Coming to give your coming to give their praise and coming to receive from their Lord and Savior. Yes. Yeah. So Lord, guide us in your word this morning. Lord, we want to grow, we want to change. Yeah. Lord, I said in a few weeks ago, I'll say it again. The people that are part of this ministry keep me and my life in courage. Mm -hmm. And we're grateful for that. Yes. Now let us all be encouraged through your yes, word and your spirit. In your name, amen. 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 James uh, <laughs> chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. My dear brothers and sisters. How can you claim to have faith in a glorious, in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ if you favor some people over others? For example, suppose someone comes into your meeting dressed in fancy clothes and expensive jewelry, and another com comes in who is poor as dressed in dirty clothes. If you give special attention and a good seat to the rich person, but you say to the poor one, you can stand over there or else sit on the floor, well... Doesn't this discrimination show that your judgments are guided by evil motives? Come on. Let me stop for a second. Now, the meeting they're talking about is a church gathering. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what he means by meeting. And, and, and listen, when we're being discriminatory, when we're being prejudiced, when we're being racist, possibly, there are evil motives. That's right. Do you not just think, oh, I'm afraid that person is what they look like? Okay, I. I out in the world, right? But that's an evil motive. We have to be careful, careful with our hearts. Mm -hmm. Listen to me, dear brothers and sisters. Hasn't God chosen poor in this world to be rich in faith? Mm -hmm. Aren't they the ones who will inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love him? But you dishonor the poor. Isn't it, isn't it the rich who oppress you and drag you into court? Aren't they the ones who slander Jesus? whose noble name bear, you indeed, it is good, I'm sorry, yes indeed, it is good when you obey the royal law as found in the scriptures. Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you favor some people over others, you're committing sin. Listen to that. You are guilty of breaking the law. For the person who keeps all the law, except one as guilty as the person who has broken all of God's laws, for the same God who said you must not commit adultery also said you must not murder. So if you murder someone but don't commit adultery, you have still broken the law. Yeah. So whatever you say or whatever you do, remember that you will be judged by the law that sets you free. James is laying it out. He's going, you're being discriminatory. Basically, you're being prejudiced and racist. It's not who Christ wants us to be. We're going to read four stories. Everyone probably heard the story at least once or twice. Hopefully, if you're reading your Bibles. <laughs> I <just know. laughs> if you're reading your Bibles, you know the stories very well. And we're going to see Jesus' focus on people who look different, people that others are treating differently. See, we're like, we're like birds of a feather who flock together. We, we flock to the people that are like us. And, and, but it's not, you know, Jesus won't get to this room and I was everybody here as church family. But if there was a person sitting here and they were a first time guest and we didn't know who they were and they didn't know Jesus and they came to church.
church of the movement get saved, okay? He'd be sinful with them. That's right. He'd say, oh, look, all my daughters, all my sons are here. Great. Let me go to the one I'm trying to get to. Preach. And that's what he wants us to do. That's what James is showing us to do. Where we're not judging by what we see. There's this guy on YouTube, I forgot his name. He always dresses in like messed up, dirty clothes. And he'll go in stores or be on the street. And he'll ask people for money. Or he'll go into a store like he's buying a quart of milk. He's going, hey, you know, would you buy me this quart of milk? Because I need it for my kids. And most people will always, you know, say, no, I ain't got it. I ain't lying like that. <laughs> and they'll want the person that gives them the money or buys them. He gives them like a thousand dollars cash. Because we always go by what we look like. Come on. We always go by what we see. Come on. We always go by what we sense. We're going to see unconditional love in these stories. Okay, we're going to see what it is to not be prejudiced, not be racist, not be judgmental. And am I telling you it's easy? Of course not. We live in a crazy, violent world. I'll never forget the guy when I first went to church when I got saved in Arizona. It was this big biker dude. I mean, he looked like he robbed you and like just like beat you down. And I just remember him being this big old, he's like, hey, bro, welcome. <laughs> you know, I was first one thing on, who's this dude? Oh, I'm like, Jack, this guy. <laughs> and he had, this guy would pack you on his neck, his face, his floor, everywhere. He was like, and obviously he kept going to church. Well, he was like this big, humble, big old bundle of love. Hmm. See, we always go by what we know. Mm-hmm. We have to go by what Jesus teaches us. Change our thoughts, Lord. So here's the first story, the woman at the well, John 4, 7, 10. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone to a village to buy some food. The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with, Samaritan, with the Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew, I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you, excuse me, and who you were speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. Okay? Now listen, Jesus wasn't prejudiced. And just to put that background, the Jews hated the Samaritans because the Samaritans felt like they took their land and the Jews felt like they took their land. So there was a conflict going on for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, okay? And they would have nothing to do with it. And this woman was at the well in the afternoon because she couldn't go in the morning when most of the women went because this woman was caught up in adultery. She had like five husbands and we read all these scriptures and information about her, okay? And, and Jesus is like, and he's there approaching her, which... Normally, he, he would never do. And we're going to read and learn why through scripture. But you know what mattered? He didn't matter that she was an adulterer. It didn't matter that, that she was with her fifth husband or something like that. It didn't matter that she was an outcast. Her soul mattered. Mm-hmm. That's good. Amen. See, when you see the soul of a person, nothing else matters. That's right. That's right. Let's keep reading John 5, 25. 20. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming. The one who's called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. When Jesus told her, I am the Messiah, just then his disciples came back. They were shocked to find him talking to a woman. But none of them had the nerve to ask, what do you want with her? Or why are you talking to her? So now we're seeing something, because remember, Jesus was a rabbi. He was a teacher. A rabbi's in the culture would never be talking to women. Never. So they weren't just surprised that Jesus was talking to someone, but as a rabbi talking to a Samaritan woman. And you know what it shows us? It shows us, be careful, because some of your Christian sisters, some of your Christian brothers, may not be as open-minded as you are. Just because other people may be kissing on the curb or right them off, doesn't mean we have to. That's right. And that's what, that's what Jesus, that's what disciples are, are seeing here. And there's something that happens that's glorious afterwards. And we read it in John 4, 39 and 42. Listen. Many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because of the woman. He had, I'm sorry, in Jesus because the woman had said, he told me everything I ever did. When they came out to see him, they begged him to stay in their village. So he stayed there for two days, long enough for many more to hear what? His message. 
mal, c'est du game. On se dit, ah, I was a messed up guy. If you know me, if I really knew me, he'd be like, I will never talk to him about Jesus. He might kill me. We didn't believe. I didn't want to even say it to me. We didn't use the word around me. That's right. Be careful who we are not approaching. Because we're afraid of what we see or what we might know. And I say don't be cautious and be smart. No, I'm not. Okay, but when we look at color or status or background or whatever, we're going to miss someone who might just be able to go tell other people about Jesus like this woman did. Amen. This is Samaria. This is Samaria. Tell me. He didn't choose. But she goes back and tells others. And then Jesus stays there for a couple of days. Listen, prejudice heart, prejudice against souls. Come on, preach. Here's the next story. A man healed on the Sabbath. Let me just make sure we understand this, okay? First of all, now he had a crippled hand. So if you were born deformed or, you know, I don't know, some kind of thing, they, 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 in that house they thought you were cursed. You know, like, you know, what did you do? Did your, your parents did or something like that? They just felt like you were cursed or you were born with some kind of disability or so on and so forth. So let's go into the verses. Mark 3, 1 through 6. Jesus went to the synagogue again and noticed the man with a deformed hand. Since it was the Sabbath, Jesus' enemies watched him closely. I love that, his enemies. If he, <laughs> they, they, this is so fun. Talk about being religious, remember? He stuff talking about religion. If he healed the man's hand, they planned to accuse him of working on the Sabbath. Talk about being stupid. Jesus said to the man with the deformed hand, come and stand in front of everyone. Then he turned his critics and asked, does the law permit God good deeds on the Sabbath? Or is it a day for doing evil? I love that. In this day, to save life or to destroy it. But they wouldn't answer him. He looked around at them angrily. So you can get angry as long as you don't sin. And was deeply saddened by their hard hearts. Then he said to the man, hold your hand out. So the man held out his hand and it was restored. At once the Pharisees went away and met with the supporters of Herod to plot how to kill Jesus. Talk about religions. Talk about religiosity. Talk about discrimination. Don't heal the man because it's the Sabbath. See, be careful what we're taught. Yeah. There's an important lesson here, okay? To be sure to not, not only not to be prejudiced, but don't be too religious. Mm -hmm. We learned it a few weeks ago, or last week, I forgot why I tweeted it. Okay? Don't, don't, no, listen, we have a religion, but don't be religious mm -hmm. that we're just going through emotions, because that's all they were doing. Come on. Come you know what I mean? And listen, listen, praise God. Listen, listen, that's listen, right. listen, listen, listen. Right. Normally, in that culture, in that time, it was probably a little village there in that area. And they knew this guy probably since he was born. And you would think, now, it says man. So that means, you know, if this happened when he was young, we don't read it, but we can assume it. They knew this guy was deformed. It's not a praise of God that he got a miracle. Say religiosity. They're over there plotting to kill him now. Because he worked on the Sabbath. Hmm. I'm slap it in the Prejudice heart. Prejudice toward souls. <laughs> discrimination from what we see. Discrimination against the soul. Because that's what we're doing. That's what we're reading. That's what we're understanding here. It's taking a look at our hearts. Making sure it's not us. You know, it's making sure that I'm not too busy to speak to that mom that's in my new kids class and so on and so forth. Or that dad who's at the sporting event or that co-worker that I really don't know well to. I, I got no time. Come on. It's the Sabbath. It's, it's my time. My time's valuable. Mm -hmm. If we think ever, God's going to smart and stand before God, he's going to go, hey, thanks for all that stuff you did in your house. Hey, thanks for all the awesome vacations you went on. No. He's going to go, John, I wish you spent a little more time doing the things 
Jesus, I bless you. Mm. I don't know if you can hear your name, man. I'm not really sure. I'll keep moving. Hey, Jesus, you got to call. I'll keep moving. They hated tax collector. This is a whole other life. Hey, let me just tell you this. The tax collector was like the evilest person in the area. Because they were under the Roman government, but so the Jews like worked for them, the, 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 the Romans, the Romans, you know, they, they had the military power in that land, and they ran the land there. And if you were a tax collector, you were basically a traitor. And not only were you a traitor, but you oppressed the people. So if you're supposed to collect, I don't know, two dollars in taxes, you collected five. And you, you gave, you know, the Roman government too, and you kept three from your own people. And this is a Jewish guy. This is one of your own brothers or sisters, you know, like taking advantage of you. And if you didn't pay, you got in trouble. You got locked up, whatever. So listen. Luke 19, what you said. Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector. Oh, let me tell you this part too. This was the worst of all, because he was the chief tax collector of the whole region. So he doesn't want to tell everybody, make sure you get more money than you're supposed to. So I can live rich in fact. Yeah. Okay. Um, he was the chief pastor in the region, and he became very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead to climb a sycamore tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick! Come down. I must be a guest in your house tonight. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they call Again, we see Jesus doing something shocking. People are like, are you kidding me? I've been following you. I've been living for you since I found out about you. And you're asking this piece of Work, very good work, thank you. You're asking this notorious, this region chief, this who oppressed us and takes advantage of his people, and you're going to say, yes, he is. That's right. Yes, he Amen. is. Amen. That's right. Yes, he is. Because that's the one you need to get to. Mm-hmm. Well, there's an insight we see here, but we don't understand. We'll read it. I'll share it after you read these next few verses. So listen, no one else would accept that man, but Jesus did. It was a play. So listen, Luke 19, 8 through 10. Uh, 19, yeah, 8 through 10. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor. Lord, if I have cheated people in their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, salvation has come to this home today. For this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and save those who were lost. So Jesus is getting to somebody, look, who's not only going to give people their money back, and he gives it back even more so, but he's getting to someone that knows a lot of people so that he can share this message with them. Because he's a region chief tax collector. So this guy has a network. See, God's getting to us so we can get to people because he wants us to network this thing. He wants us to share this thing. So that others can come to know Christ. But if we're prejudiced and we see people that are crappy, and listen, anyone else? What are you crapping for? Oh, yeah. You know, you know, I know everybody in this room. I even know Luke's young. I know everybody in this room. I know all of you young. <laughs> Most of it, anyway. But then he eats <coughs> us anyway. Yep. Come on. He's a bunch of notorious sinners. Come on. Just like Zacchaeus. Yep. And he saved our souls. Yeah. Now it's our job not to view people the way this world does. Right. Listen, sometimes some of the worst people are the ones that look the best. Mm. Mm. That's good. Right? Check out Hollywood. Mm. <laughs> Every soul matters. That's right. Gotta look at our hearts and our minds. Mm. Every soul matters. Here's the last story, the sinful woman. Luke 7, 36 and 39. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him. So Jesus went to his home and sat down to eat. 
When a certain immoral woman from the city heard he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Then she knelt behind him at his feet, weeping. Her tears fell on his feet, and she wiped them off of her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. When the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know what kind of woman is touching him. She's a sinner. Listen, when we see somebody, a brother, or, or, or a man, or a woman, and we know they're sinners, that's the one we need to go to. That's the one we need to change our seat out of where we sit in this section. Maybe we should sit over here and we can meet some sinners. So that we can talk about Jesus. But see, we want to be comfortable. Remember, I always speak in weeds and hustles. I mean, about the word is together. We want to be comfortable. We want to sit with who we know. And Jesus is going, man, that's awesome. Thanks for that good family. But you need to sit with some people you don't know because their souls are lost. And we, we have to save them. And this woman is blessing Jesus. He's prepared, she's actually preparing him for his burial, for going to the cross. And Jesus is actually not judging her the way the Pharisees saw her. Okay? Listen, listen, let's keep reading because Jesus now addresses the Pharisees who invited him. Luke 7, 45 to 48. You didn't greet me with a kiss. But from the time I first came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with rare perfume. I tell you, her sins, listen to this, and they are many, have been forgiven. So she has shown me much love. But a person who is forgiven little shows one little love, only little love. Then he said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. Now, in that culture, if you came to my house, I would have like a bowl of water by the door, maybe even have to have a servant person, that was all cultural thing, and you'd have a little jar of oil or something, some kind of oil, or even a little perfume, and a guest would come, their feet would be cleaned, and then they would, you would give them a little oil, and they would like refresh themselves, or, you know, it's dusty, it's dry air in that area, in that region, so they would be refreshed. See, the Pharisees just wanted Jesus to come because he wanted Jesus' status there. So he didn't even give him a holy kiss or a refreshment. Some sinning woman who had many sins did what the Pharisees couldn't do because he was so caught up in religiosity. He was so caught up in his, his, his uh, uh, judgmental, uh, prejudiced mindset that he missed the whole thing. And it's funny how he goes and her sins are forgiven. Mm, Open good. our hearts and minds. God wants us to have some of these encounters with, 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 with sinners so they can come to know Jesus. A prejudiced heart is prejudiced toward souls. It's all that matter. It goes hand in hand. We need to look at our hearts, look at our minds, and allow the Lord to, to guide us and show us and open us up. Okay? It's so important. Others need to come to get if people ever need Jesus in this world. Look how crazy it is. If young kids ever needed Jesus in this world, they do now. I was looking for a video to show. I had a couple of other ones in mind, and I remembered this one from, you know, I don't know how many years ago. And, and I had another one that I thought might have been better, but this one just hits it on the head. So let's just watch this video and then we'll pray.
video is awesome, but the last part is like this, the bottom line. What do we say? Mm -hmm. We were taught to see all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. Cling to people that are like you. Get close to people that are like you. Be with people that are like you. <laughs> Jesus is saying, Look for people that are not like you. Right. That are not like us. Right. So they can come to know them. That's the goal. That's the goal. That's great. Lord, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for everyone listening today. Lord, I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. Anyone who hears this morning, if you have never truly made a, a true proclamation, a true dedication to you, a true accepting you into their lives, into their hearts, Lord, to become born again, to allow your spirit to be alive in them. I pray today is their day. Open up their heart, open up their mind, Holy Spirit. And that they would invite you in, and they would connect with a good church, a good Bible-teaching, God-loving, non-judging church. Not a religious place, but a place with God's love that stands on God's word. If someone's been off track, Lord, and maybe that prejudice has set in like never before, I pray today that you would break that off them and open up their hearts again and get back on track with you, Lord. And Jesus, I pray right now through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the power of your word that we just read, Search our hearts. Mm -hmm. Search my heart, Lord. Mm -hmm. David says in the Psalms, renew a right spirit in me. Renew something in us. Help us to maybe change what we've been taught or what we even feel because of maybe being raised a certain way or even societal issues and challenges. Help us to see things like you see, Jesus. And we love you. And we praise you. Amen. Amen. I bless you, everybody. Have an amazing day. That's when I hope you up.